It opens with CM Punk at FTR versus Max Caster and the Acclaimed. And Caster comes out and does his rap, and the gun club screws up the city they're in to set up Bowens announcing they're in Los Angeles and everyone cheering. And they got these names wrong, and Tony Schiavone dubs them the Dumbass Boys. Which, yeah, that's a new gimmick. Get the uh, get the city wrong, and then uh, Anthony Bones gets to correct it for the big pop. It's an interesting gimmick, by the way, because they're supposed to be heels, but man, they're over. Now, this actually, they may be baby faces now that they think about it. The ass boys. Yeah, I knew the moment these these this crew got together, it was like abundantly clear this this group's going to be over. They, they may are. be kind of an ironic baby face where they think they're heels, but everyone else thinks they're baby faces. Does that make sense? Yeah, it could be, but I think I they're just know. baby faces. All I know is it made me laugh when Tony called them the dumbass boys. So there's that. Uh, the early height of this match was Billy Gunn getting a cheap shot in from the floor, and Jim Ross learning he's been known to lay that in, especially when there's no receipt coming. I laughed. So in the middle of the break, we go to commercial. It is, of course, Pride Month, and we have a statement, a little statement in appearance by Anthony Bowens, who I had no idea was gay, but there you go. So, uh, Where in the world have you been, brother? Apparently not paying attention. I guess. So it's, it's not news then. All no. Right. Okay. Well, anyway, that's the whole point of this kind of thing is uh, uh, awareness. Now I am more aware. So CM Punk gets the hot tag. Let it be known for the record. We have been talking about how he's not the world's best athlete and not the most coordinated approach that you ever saw. Let it be known that his first hot tag as AEW world champion was horrible. First thing he did was fuck up a springboard clothesline and fall on his ass. Everything he was doing with the ass boys looked terrible. He kind of sort of power bombed Austin into Billy. He hit the go to sleep and FTR hit the big rig for the win. As Jim Ross noted, it was bowling shoe ugly. Yes. But as he also noted, it was still a lot of fun. I did not go back and watch the whole comeback, but uh, obviously, clearly he screwed up the springboard. I'm not sure it was his fault. Some of the spots with the ass boys. Because one of them he tried to drop kick, and this ass boy was miles away, and fair, uh, so fair. I'm not sure that was that was Punk's fault, but it certainly was not a uh, it was not a great comeback, and you know this guy uh, he turned it into a promo. He, he did. He, he did not try to pretend like this was not a fucked up comeback, yeah. and uh, he used it to cut a promo about how he's still got a lot to learn and he's still got to get better. But yeah. damn it, that's what you do as the champion. That's right. It's pretty awesome. He had a line about how he'd never done drugs, but he imagined that, that kind of high was that this crowd reaction felt like. And Dax notes that he has done things that Punk hasn't done and then dropped a little stoner laugh, which made me laugh. And he talked about his wife and baby girl in the, in the crowd. They're the only thing that's more important to him than pro wrestling. He does not like being attacked, and he calls out David Finley. And Punk notes, speaking of David Finley, speaking of New Japan pro wrestling, they've got a pay-per-view to sell. I demand to see my opponent right now. And out comes the ace. It's Hiroshi Tanahashi. That's right. Were we just talking about this? This sounds familiar. Yes, Hiroshi Tanahashi versus CM Punk for the AW mm-hmm. title. Excellent idea for a match, if I do say so myself. I did. I was baffled. I mean, I guess I kind of see it because it's popular, but they're both popular. But Jim Ross compared Tanahashi to a young Sting. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know what that was about. They're very charismatic. He's in his early 40s. Yeah, he's not young. And uh, he's much better than Young Sting was. Sting, Young Sting got by on like a lot of athleticism and tons of charisma. And old Tanahashi has both those things, and he's also a much better professional wrestler. So I don't know. That was a strange. That was a strange comparison. Sangha versus Lee stands on Lee's chest when she's down. Bangs her, uh, her on the apron. Pull, um, puts elbow on her chin, threw her out of the ring. You know, it doesn't really matter a lot in 2022, Granny, but uh, no. Lee, in fact, identifies as a man. <laughs> Legend a versus woman. Perez. That was another NXT. Can you believe the little guy beat him? He beat Legend. A that. little guy? It's now small. Roxanne Perez is a man? Yeah. Roxanne. <laughs> no. no, these were two women. <laughs> you got to be kidding me, Granny. you got to be kidding me today. God. <laughs> if you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions 
of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, the Mad Men podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.